Are you breathing in plastic particles that quietly push your lung cells toward cancer-linked behavior before you feel a single symptom? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're examining new evidence that everyday microplastics and nanoplastics don't just sit in your airways. They alter how your cells function in ways that raise red flags for long-term risk. I'm Alara Skye. The concern is direct. Healthy lung cells that absorb plastic particles become more mobile, activate survival pathways, and show DNA damage without obvious inflammation. You meet these particles in indoor dust, shedding from synthetic clothes and carpets, tire wear, and degraded packaging. They are small enough to bypass normal defenses, embed where gas exchange happens, and begin disrupting the way your cells manage stress and repair. A new study in the Journal of Hazardous Materials tested polystyrene micro and nanoplastics against healthy lung epithelial cells and several lung cancer cell lines. The surprise was that normal cells absorbed more plastic and changed more dramatically than cancer cells. Instead of dying, they switched on damage response systems, including DNA repair and antioxidant defenses. Oxidative stress was central, and size mattered. The smaller nanoparticles drove the strongest damage. Researchers also saw a shift toward behaviors associated with malignancy. Cell migration increased after exposure, a hallmark of aggressive disease. Imaging showed particles entering cells, disturbing the membrane, and reorganizing the actin cytoskeleton that controls shape and movement. Several pro-survival signaling pathways became more active. Notably, these shifts occurred without classic inflammatory signals, so you would not necessarily notice symptoms while these cellular changes accumulate. The implication is that inhaled plastics bypass barriers, lodge deep in lung tissue, and start altering cell behavior early. Left unchecked, those changes can lay groundwork for chronic inflammation, airway remodeling, or later disease. To understand the broader picture, a 2024 review pooled 28 animal and three human studies and found that microplastics harm multiple systems, even at exposure levels that mirror daily life. That review reported inflammation, DNA damage, and endocrine effects across lungs, gut, and reproductive organs. In the digestive tract, particles disrupted the intestinal lining and microbiome and promoted persistent low-grade inflammation. In reproductive models, researchers observed sperm damage, altered ovarian structure, and reduced fertility. Oxidative stress again tied the findings together. Excess reactive molecules, impaired repair, and changes to cell membranes and immune signaling. Scale and persistence elevate the risk. Nanoplastics, the smallest fraction, cross the lung or gut lining, enter the bloodstream, and distribute to organs including liver, kidneys, and brain. Once deposited, they can remain and interfere with normal organ function. The takeaway from converging data is straightforward. This is not only an environmental issue, it is a whole body exposure that reaches you through air, food, and water. Researchers are now testing ways to reduce internal plastic load. One approach uses cross-linked cilium. In water treatment experiments, acrylamide cross-linked cilium removed over 92% of polystyrene, PVC, and PEAT. Because it swells and forms a gel, it could, in principle, trap particles in your gut before absorption. Cheetosan, a shellfish-derived fiber, also shows promise. In animals, a ketosan-enriched diet increased elimination of polyethylene microplastics versus controls. People with shellfish allergies should avoid chitosan. These binders work via physical adsorption, using hydrophobic and electrostatic forces to capture particles. A practical consideration is timing. They can also bind nutrients, so they are best paired with processed or packaged foods that are more likely to contain plastics. Emerging probiotic strategies add another layer. Two strains, Lacticocybacillus paracase DT66 and Lactiplantibacillus plantarum DT88, bound tiny polystyrene particles in laboratory testing and may help form biofilms that trap plastics for clearance. Your liver contributes as well. 
Kupfer cells in the liver filter foreign particles from blood and root them into bile for excretion, although larger plastics can linger, especially when liver function is compromised. To support bile flow, researchers are investigating ursodeoxycholic acid, UDCA, and tar or sodioxycholic acid, TUDCA, as agents that stimulate bile production and improve particle transport. These remain under study for this purpose. Another active area is autophagy, the cellular recycling system that helps isolate and clear debris. Compounds under investigation include rapamycin, which inhibits mTOR to ramp up autophagy, and spermidine, a naturally occurring polyamine that supports cellular cleanup. In lab and animal models, together they helped counter microplastic-induced mitochondrial dysfunction and oxidative stress. The evidence suggests a multi-step strategy may be required, starting with exposure reduction. Reducing what you inhale begins at home. Choose natural textiles such as cotton, wool, linen, or hemp, and ventilate laundry areas. Synthetic fibers shed respirable fragments, especially when drying indoors. Use HEPA filtration where you spend most time, bedrooms and workspaces, and look for performance down to PM 2.5 or smaller to capture plastic dust. In apartments or near roads, consistent filtration becomes even more important. Avoid heating food in plastic. Microwaving plastic containers or pouring hot liquids into plastic-lined cups increases micro and nanoparticle release. Store and reheat in glass or stainless steel instead. Address indoor dust with a sealed vacuum plus HEPA filter and switch to damp dusting so particles are captured rather than recirculated. These steps lower the concentration of airborne fragments you would otherwise inhale every day. Scrutinize personal care products. Exfoliating scrubs, toothpastes, and cleansers that list polyethylene or polypropylene introduce microbeads directly onto your skin and into wastewater with potential for aerosolization during use. Choose products free of plastic microbeads and thickeners. None of these actions requires large overhauls. Consistent small changes reduce cumulative exposure and the cellular stress that follows. If you are wondering how all this adds up in practical terms, consider the pattern seen across studies. Particles embed in lung tissue, activate pro-survival pathways, increase mobility, and cause DNA damage, even when inflammation is not obvious. Smaller particles penetrate deeper, cross into circulation, and can reach other organs. Meanwhile, early trials suggest that targeted fibers, selected probiotics, bile-supportive compounds, and autophagy enhancers may help limit absorption and promote clearance. Use today to take measurable steps. Identify one high-leverage exposure source in your routine and replace it. Switch heated meals to glass, add a HEPA unit to your bedroom, or choose natural fabrics for clothing and bedding. If you are exploring binders or probiotics mentioned here, pair them strategically with packaged foods to intercept particles before absorption. And be mindful of ketosan if you have shellfish allergies. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.